Hey YouTube, it's Chris K2CJB with K2CJB Radio. Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to talk about portable shortwave radios and my uh, my latest project to pick one and to uh, to start using. I got into ham radio by listening to multiband a uh, multiband radio I had and a little shortwave radio that my father had. That that's how I got the bug. The multiband radio actually had a continuous tuning from the aircraft band into where all like the taxi cabs and the weather frequencies are, but right in between is where two meters is. And that's how I got hooked into ham radio. Years ago, about 20 years ago, I got a Grundig Yacht Boy 400, a portable shortwave receiver. It was capable of receiving sideband. So great radio. I've used it for years. I still have it. The antenna broke on it years ago. When I say broke, I mean, it actually it failed inside internally. Um, the way it was mounted onto the circuit board, there was this, this little assembly and it didn't work. It failed. So what I ended up doing was actually removing it all. There were no replacement parts available. And I just soldered a piece of wire on it like a pigtail, brought it out the side of the radio. And that was how I used the radio. I still have it. It's retired into my garage. It's my FM radio in the garage and that's fine. But I wanted something to replace it. And um, I started looking around at the different radios that are available today and I narrowed it down to four. First I looked at the Texan, the PL990 and the PL880. I looked at the Sanjian um, 909X2 and then I looked at the the Eton Executive Elite which is uh, which is the radio I decided on and I'm going to just walk you through uh, how, how I came to that decision. The first thing is you can't go wrong with any of these radios okay they are loaded with features they can do sideband they've got filtering in them they've got you know, different bandwidths you can choose for sideband they, they, they're outstanding radios all four of them so really the way I decided it was more of a, a functional decision rather than a um, you know something was just specification wise was much better than another one um, they're all all outstanding radios and nothing bad can be said about any of them. So here's how I arrived at my decision. Um, I looked at the Texan 990. I started there. That was beyond the price I wanted to pay. That simple. It was just, you know, I want to use this sitting on my porch listening around on the radio. So I don't want to spend, you know, lots of money on it. So, so that radio is at the higher end, but I, I kind of dismissed it because of its price. And then I looked at the 880 significantly cheaper and I was like okay it's got great reviews it's got great features not all the features of the 990 but still for what I wanted to use it for it was fine so then I took a look at the Sanjian now the Sanjian kind of falls in between price wise the 880 and the 990 actually the 880 is the cheaper of all of them and the, the 990 is most expensive. So the Sanjin's in between. Beautiful display on that radio. Um, and and it, I looked at that, I said, wow, that, that's really the radio I gotta have. A little more than I wanted to spend, but it had a lot of the features I liked. And it also includes the aircraft band in it. Now I hadn't thought of that in the beginning, but then I started thinking, hey, that'd be pretty cool to be able to listen to, you know, to planes flying around overhead. And we're not far from an airport here in Connecticut. So I said, that'd be pretty cool you know, to listen to that. So, okay, the Sanjin's got aircraft in it. And so in my mind, I said, Hey, that's going to give it a little bit of an edge because that would just give me more things to listen to. And then I looked at the, the, the Eton, the Executive Elite, and I said, uh, hey, okay, this is a great radio. It's basically a, a Grundig. It's the latest generation of Grundig. I've got great you know, experience with Grundig radios. Price-wise, it was in where I wanted it to be. I said, oh, I mean, it was a little higher than the 880, but it's, a, it's kind of where I wanted it to be. It, too, has aircraft in it. I said, oh, okay, so... If that's the case, then that kind of takes the Texans off the table. So now I'm going back and forth between the Sanjian and the Eton. And they're both at the, they're both priced very close to each other. I think about a $20 or $30 difference. So now I start searching, okay, who's got them? And Ham Radio Outlet <laughs> had a spring sale of 25% off certain products. And this radio was in that sale. It brought its price below the PL880. Decision made. <laughs> That's how I reached my decision. It was basically, I, I narrowed it down. I kind of like the idea of an aircraft frequencies in it. And oh, by the way, HRO had a great sale on it. So decision made. <laughs> so what we're going to do today. First, we're going to take it out of the box and then I'm going to go out, sit on a porch and we'll start playing around with it and get some initial reactions to it. Well, let's take her out of the box. I probably should have used a knife for this, shouldn't I? <laughs> Peanuts. I hate these things. Come on, HRO. <laughs> I defy anyone to open up a box of peanuts in it and not get at least one on the floor. <laughs> okay, here's the rig. 
So let's uh, let's pop it open and um, see what we get in the box. All right, we have our instruction manual. So of course we will have to read through this, and it's uh, wow, that is oh no, it's, it's in English, and uh, I would assume something. Oh, well, since it is an international brand, I would assume they have the languages in here. So okay, there's the manual. Let's see what's in this little compartment over here. Oh, there's the the wall wart. Okay, and here's the rig. First impression is it's pretty small. It's uh, definitely smaller than my uh, Yacht Boy, that's for sure. The case has a little magnetic catch on it so you can protect the front panel of the radio and protect all the buttons. So, well, let's throw some batteries in it and see what happens. I've installed the batteries and something I noted, it was another video that I had seen pointed out the same thing. When the antenna passes through, there is this little elbow connection here, but you, you don't want to force it past this point, obviously. So when you open the radio up with the cover on it, the antenna doesn't go perfectly vertical. Uh, so, okay, so if, you, if you're going to do that, the just know that the antenna will be facing you a little bit. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Okay, let's turn it on. See what we get. We're sitting inside now, obviously, so... On. <laughs> All right, and we're in the AM band. Like most radios of this generation, it does that chuffing as you tune around. I noticed when you press the tuning button, you see the tuning rate goes from slow to stop, where nothing happens, to fast. Oh, you know, the other morning, uh, there we go. He was very convincing. AM radio works. Uh, Michelle Obama 2024. Michelle 2024 is called. I would assume it would. Okay, let's go into FM then and see how FM works. 90, I'll just pick a frequency near here. Where's the decimal point? Ah, oh, okay. You don't need a decimal point, it knows, it's smart. Watch Jackson Smith and Jigba, Quentin Johnston, Zay Flowers, Jordan Addison all go off the board. Now you really gotta trust yourself and just ask yourself what the best situation is. So uh, I will say the audio fidelity is pretty good. Quite obviously, I think you know the, the, the pick there is a great one. Deontay Banks is a good pick. Devin, you're a big uh, Giants fan. Uh, yeah, the audio fidelity is very good. I'm noticing the display turns off. I think that's a battery safe feature, like most radios of this generation have. So there's nothing wrong with that. Let's try tuning around the ham radio bands and see if we can pick anything up there. I don't know if we will, but we can try. So we'll try uh, 7, 200. 40 meters, I'm on AM now. Pressing this button here. Now it's kind of hard to see. U slash LSB. Now I learned that from watching a YouTube video. <laughs> I had to actually look at it, see what it was. Okay, so I'm on lower sideband. And let's see. We may have to go outside to get the, to hear anything on this. There you go. Slow tuning goes to one kilohertz steps. Okay, I'm learning with you. <laughs> okay, let's try 20. The bands have not been good lately, so I'm not surprised. You know, let's put the uh, let's put the Yezu on and see if there's a uh, if there's any activity. Fourteen two twenty seven seems to have something. Uh, 
Again, we're inside, so I don't really anticipate getting a whole lot here. So let's take it up on the porch, or I'm going to be listening with it, and uh, see what we find. So it looks like 20 meters is working, and we just heard them say that the bands are pretty rough, and they have been the last couple of days. So, what the side band sounded pretty good. If I could find another signal, just to try to compare that would be great. But uh, yeah, the bands are really in rough shape. Uh, we could try 40 again. No. How do we clear? <laughs> No, that isn't it. Error. Okay. Seven, two, hundred. That chuffing is kind of annoying, isn't it? For those of us that like to just tune around on a radio every time the, the detent of the, the knob moves, you know, it's just a characteristic of these new types of radios. There's really not much we can do about that, but. I do miss being able to just um, tune around and hear just uh, constant RF and not this little chuffing effect. But let's see if we can find some shortwave stations to listen to. To get out of sideband mode, I had to break out the manual and figure this out. It's not obvious from looking at the control panel. You know, you just you would think just tapping the sideband button might take you out of sideband because that's how you went in. But that's not the case. It just goes back and forth between lower and upper sideband. To get out of sideband, you quickly tap the sync button below it. It takes a second, and now you're in AM mode. That's kind of tricky. I'm going to go through the WWV frequencies and see if we can pick any of them up. This is uh, 5 megahertz. As you hear, we're just getting noise there at the moment. Um, well respected. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Okay, that was a bit of a trap. I don't know what I did. Let's see. Okay, there's 10 megahertz. Fifteen megahertz. We're not getting any of the WWV frequencies. So I don't anticipate getting many short wave stations today. Now again the condition the propagation's been horrendous lately, so that's probably why we're not seeing anything. So I'm going to tune around the um, aircraft frequencies and see if we can find anything there. How to look up the frequency for approach. I will say I had to turn the volume up full to copy anything here. So we are hearing <laughs> aircraft, obviously, but uh, audio quality not so great. Now that might be something I'm doing. I don't know. I haven't set something right on here, maybe. I don't know. Here's the bandwidth adjustments, wide and narrow, and there are quite a few selections. They're pretty narrow. Three, three, four, two, three, well, that sounds good. Okay, that works. So all in all, I like the radio. It's 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 compact. It's uh, it's, it's a lot smaller than the other one. <laughs> Seems to work uh, on on AM, FM, uh, ham radio. We got some sideband on it. Um, aircraft work, shortwave. I'm I'm assuming works, but you know the propagation's been pretty bad lately, so it's really kind of hard to tell. Maybe tonight I can noodle around with it a little bit later when the conditions are better on shortwave and just see how it works. I like the fact it's got multiple settings for the bandwidth. And that was another reason, but. The, Again, like I said earlier, all these radios have it. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I went with it, but they all have that. So it's not like um, it's something unique to this radio. Of course, there's a, there's a learning curve <laughs> with this. There's a lot of presets. I got to set the clock on it. Probably have to tell it what country I'm in. So uh, there's quite, quite a few settings I have to do with it. That's all right. That's what we get these things for, right? But so far, I'm, I'm impressed with it, and it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, let me know what you think. If you have one of these, um, let me know your thoughts on it. Maybe some shortcuts and tips that I might be able to use. <laughs> um, and if you have the other radios, you can weigh in too. Again, I, I'm not against any of these radios. I think they're all fine radios. It's just um, this one, 
for two reasons. It met all the, you know, the aircraft requirements, which was an, a, a function that I wanted, and I got that HRO sale. You can't go wrong, right? So here it is. It's the, uh, the Eton Elite Executive. I had it wrong earlier, and uh, I'm quite happy with it. So leave some comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you hit like. I would appreciate that. And if you really like to follow on what I'm doing here with all my radio adventures, then make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell, and then um, you'll get notified next time I put a video up. So until next time, 73 from K2 CJB.